What's up everybody, Tim here, back with another video. So we live in a time period where it's hard to get people to agree on just about anything, okay? However, I think there is one topic that we all can agree on, and that's the fact that like rent is just getting out of control. Rent prices are just too high. They are just taking too much of our paychecks to go towards rent. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about 15 alternatives to paying high rent. Now, some of these are alternatives that will allow you to get totally free rent and others are ones that can just like drastically reduce your rent. So let's get right to it. Number one is house sitting. OK, now there are people who have apartments, they have houses and they might want to go on like an extended vacation or they might need to go visit a loved one. And so a lot of times these people don't want their house to just sit empty or they might have pets that they're not taking with them that need to be watched over, fed, whatever. So these people will get on a website like Trusted House Sitters, and I'll link to that in the description below, and they will find someone to watch their house. So it's called house sitting. And basically in exchange for you, you know, feeding their dog, feeding their cat, and watching over the house, make sure no one breaks in or anything like that, you get to stay in the house for free. Number two is one that's gotten very popular, and I think everybody knows about this method, and that is like living in a vehicle. You know, so many people uh, voluntarily and sadly involuntarily have started living in their cars, their vans, their RVs. It is a move, ladies and gentlemen, because I think a lot of people are just like, hey, I got this car that I'm paying hundreds of dollars a month on, if not thousands of dollars a month. And it just sits in front of my job, just sits in front of my apartment. And I'm also paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for my apartment or, or, or you know, or, or renting this house. Like, why don't I just combine the two? And it is a sacrifice. Yes, your van is not gonna be as comfortable as your two bedroom apartment, but it can allow you to save up a lot of money. It doesn't have to be forever, unless you want it to be. If you're interested in living in a vehicle, there are a ton of people on the internet who are talking about this. I will link to a good friend of mine. Her name is Travel Snacks. She's been living out of vehicles since 2019. She has a lot of great information uh, on her channel for people who might be thinking about this lifestyle. Number three is one that I have used, and it is a way to drastically reduce the amount of rent you pay, and that is renting a room. You don't have to have your own apartment. You don't have to have your own house, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're someone like me who's single. All I need is a room. There's lots of, of websites for finding roommates. My last room I rented out was $500, utilities included, and like that is so much cheaper than me paying 800 to a thousand dollars and then i have utilities and all this other stuff like and usually getting into a room is so much easier you don't have application fees a lot of times there's no deposit you show up you, you know you may pay your first month's rent and then every month after that you just pay definitely look into renting a room if you don't need a whole like apartment moving on number four this one is a little drastic this one is out there, ladies and gentlemen, but we got to cater to everyone who might watch this video. Some of y'all are very courageous. <laughs> and number four is uh, living in a tent. You know, you can hop on the Amazon, get you a tent, $30, $40, go down to the Walmart, get you a tent, $29.99. And there are still places, I can attest to this, I've never done it, but I've seen people doing it all over the country. And I would imagine all over the world where you can still, you know, just uh, duck off in the woods and live in a tent totally rent free, not beholding to anybody. Moving on, number five. I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, um, in today's climate where a lot of people are working remotely, a lot of companies are going 100% remote, uh, there's a lot of office space out there. People are not buying uh, uh, or renting, excuse me, office space like they used to. A lot of the new companies are going online. You know, like office space is, is like available out there. And a lot of times you can find office space cheaper than renting an apartment. OK, and a lot of these offices will have like bathrooms either in them or sometimes down the hall. You know, what I mean, I was seeing office space for like six hundred dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month. And it's a room and it has access to a bathroom. And yet, yeah, yeah, you may not have a kitchen and things of that nature. But if you're someone like me who eats out or all I need is like a microwave, you know, like you may be. And depending on where the office space is, you might not be able to get away with this. But I think there's a lot of offices where like people just don't care. You know, you just put your little fake business sign on the door. They're not really going to ask no questions. Number six. Number six is one I've been a, I have been an advocate for since 2015. And I have used this many times. It has really like changed my life. And that is seasonal jobs with housing. So 
a seasonal job is a job that typically lasts one season, hence the name. So it might be a summer season or a winter season. Basically, you're going to be working for companies. A lot of times they're in like tourist areas and they have more work than they have local workers to fill the jobs. So they hire people from all over the country, all over the world to come to these locations. Um, think like national parks, things like that. Um, to work. And since they know you're coming from all over the country, all over the world, they know you're not going to have a place to stay. They have to provide housing. And since a lot of these aren't the highest paying jobs in the world, housing's pretty cheap. I think at my first seasonal job, which was in Yellowstone National Park, housing was like $10 a day. And just to sweeten the deal, that came with three meals a day. So I was paying $300 a month for uh, housing and three meals a day. Full disclosure, uh, all employee housing is created different. There will be some where you get your own room. Uh, a lot of them, you, it's like dorm style, so you'll share a room. But for the, you know, what they charge, you know, you can deal with that for four months to get greatly reduced rent, or in some cases, free rent. Some places have free housing. There is a website I always use called coolworks.com. I will link to it in the description box. Not only is it the best website, for seasonal or temporary like travel jobs some really awesome people that run it so definitely check out coolworks.com moving on to number seven our seventh way to like uh, uh get out of paying high crazy rent is to move back in with your parents and i'll also add move in with the family member move in with a friend okay there is nothing that says you have to have your own place and if you still got your old bedroom at your parents' house or your parents got a basement or a friend of yours has extra room and they're willing to let you live there for free or like super discounted rent, go for it. Go for it. Why not? OK, it doesn't have to be forever. And anybody who laughs at you because you're like 37 and living with your parents, you can laugh at them because you're saving nine hundred dollars every month that they're blowing. Not to mention, there's a lot of lonely people out there in the world. Your parents would probably love for you to come back. And stay for a while a lot of your friends would love for you to like stay there with them for a little bit you know if you're a responsible decent person so look into that folks swallow your pride let go detach from your ego move back in with your parents save a little money moving right along we are on number eight and that is kind of in the similar vein of some we talked about before but like get more roommates okay if you're renting a place and you know you've got two bedrooms rent one of the bedrooms out pay you know what i mean you know pay less rent. I also believe like we can get even crazier with this. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people who say you have a one bedroom apartment and you have a huge living room that you're never in. You know, you have a huge living room you're never in because you're always in your room. You know, you could buy some partitions off Amazon for $50 and partition off that living room and rent that out. We got to get, you know, creative these days, ladies and gentlemen. Why do we have these, this big living room? OK, maybe, you're, you, know, you know, you're renting a house and it has a garage. Maybe you can get somebody to like live in. the. Who knows? Just put it out there. Hey, three hundred dollars a month. You can live in my garage and you can use the bathroom inside. Someone might do it. Number nine is one I have done short term. And I think a lot of people are going to start doing long term once they like figure it out. And that's living in Airbnbs. Airbnb will allow you to rent monthly and you can rent multiple months. Say you find an Airbnb you really like, good location, it's cheap. If, if, if they have vacancies, you can rent that thing out for like three months, four months, five months, you know, and they charge you at the beginning of every month. Um, so it's not like you'd have to spring for three months of payments up front. No, just every 30 days, they'll charge you for the next month. And with Airbnbs, there's no, you know, application fees. You know what I mean? There's no deposits. Like you just pay your money and you go. You know, and the cool thing about Airbnb is if you want to stay a month, you stay a month and then you find another one. Um, and if you're mobile and you can travel all over the country, here's a little hack. Um, Airbnbs get cheaper during the off seasons of certain locations. For example, I go to uh, Myrtle Beach every winter uh, for a month or two and I stay in an Airbnb and it is five times cheaper than it would be during the summer. Also with Airbnbs, a lot of people have say maybe they have like a big house that they put on Airbnb and they might want someone to like live on that property in one of the rooms or in a basement or in the garage. And in exchange for like you cleaning the Airbnb every time someone leaves, you get free room and board, free room, excuse me. So you can look into that. Uh, I think it's called being an Airbnb property host. Now, moving on number 10. This is another extreme one, another drastic one, but couch surfing is back. OK, the pandemic came through, shut it down, as it did a lot of other things. But couch surfing is back. There are people 
who will allow you to come stay with them for absolutely free. And it may only be a couple days, it may only be like a week, but you know, you just get on couchsurf.com and like, you know, if you wanna put in the legwork, you can find people, you know, you can just rotate and go different places and maybe use this in conjunction with house sitting or in conjunction with Airbnbs, but like, Every now and then you might be able to find someone who will let you just stay on their couch for a week for absolutely free. And all you got to do is just be, you know, a cool, you know, person and hang out with them and talk to them and listen to their stories. Number 11. And let me put a disclaimer on this one, ladies and gentlemen. If you do this one and you get in trouble, you didn't hear this from me. OK, I don't know how legal this is, but I have heard from quite a few people who rented storage units and lived in them. OK, if you've ever watched Atlanta. Um, he was living in a storage unit, I think it's season one for a little bit. But like, yeah, you can rent a storage unit for $100, $200, depending on where you live. And a lot of times they're climate controlled, okay? And you might be able to like slide up in there, pull the door down and sleep overnight. You can use this in conjunction with maybe living in your vehicle, you know? Um, or if you're in a situation where you just desperately need somewhere to go and don't have a lot of money, rent you a storage unit for a few hundred dollars, come in there at night, you know? pull the door down, you know, sleep. And you can already have a bed and stuff in there. It won't look weird you bring the bed and stuff in there because like people store beds in their, their storage unit. So you can have, a, you can get a decent sized storage unit for pretty cheap. And if it's not somewhere that like it's a problem, you might be able to get away with it for a while. Once again, you get in trouble, don't send them to me because I don't know you. I think we are on number 12. This is another good one. And I've tried this one. It's work exchanges. Okay, I use one called Woof. W W O O F is worldwide work on organic farms. I'll put a link in the description box. And basically, in exchange for you going to different farms and ranches, uh, most of them organic, they also have like some communes, things like that. In exchange for you going and spending five, six hours a day working for free, they give you a place to stay. And a lot of times, I think they give you like one meal um, a day maybe two it's it's in the you know when you go to wolf uh i think wolfusa.com i'll link to that one but there's actually woofing websites every country has its own website so the rules may be different but bottom line is in exchange for working a few hours a day they give you places to stay now number uh 13 uh, in-house helper for the elderly haven't done this one i've heard people recommend it but if you're the type of person who gets along good with elderly people um a lot of and you may have to have some qualifications for this i'm not sure but there are people who you know need someone to live in house to take care of you know elderly family member you could also put nanny on this it's an option you can google it you know i've seen jobs like this pop up on indeed once again, I don't know the qualification certifications, but it's a way to like have a place to stay for free and make some money and pay absolutely no rent. All right, uh, number 14, moving right along, wrapping this video up. Number 14 is look into government housing assistance, swallow your pride, detach from your ego, Google your area and just see what the government housing assistance is because there are lots of programs out there to help people out and don't assume you make too much money you probably don't you you might but you know a lot especially these days i would imagine the requirements have, have the, the income requirements probably have gone up as rent has gone up so check it out you know you might be able to qualify for getting you know the government to pay half your rent you know what i mean don't be too proud to get on section eight you know what i mean just look into it and finally number 15 this is another kind of drastic one but if you really down and out and can't afford the rent and you need a roof over your head, hostels are a good place. Okay, hostels, um, sometimes they have private rooms that are a little pricier, but you know, hostels are still, even though they're a lot pricier in the US than around the world, hostels are still a great place to get a bed for, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars a night. All right, and like I said, you might use this in conjunction with some of the other ones, but every now and then when you just have no place to go, instead of spending $100 a night for a hotel, if you can spend 30 for a hostel room, which yeah, you'll have to share it with a lot of people, but you know, you go there for a week for a couple hundred dollars, you know what I mean? That can keep a roof over your head, you have access to a bathroom. So look into hostels, okay? You know, like I said, you can piece together a bunch of these and make it so that when you are, you know, paying for your accommodation, it's cheap, or you can kind of set it up to where you never really pay any type of rent. You know, we got to cre creative. We just don't have to give in to them being like, nah, we're going to raise y'all rent. Nothing y'all can do about it. Yes, there is something we can do about it. We can take our money back <laughs> or never give it, give it to them in the first place. And you might find out you like living with a roommate. You might find out you like living in a storage unit or living in Airbnb. You know what I mean? 
So check it out, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video has been helpful. If you know any other options for free rent or, or greatly reduced rent, please put them in the comment box. Let's get a conversation going. Let's help each other out because like we need to keep all our money. Okay, we trying to get financially free out here. You can't do that giving away all your disposable income. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.